Premiere Pro is a non-linear video editor, and there are three basic characteristics of non-linear editors. The first one is that there's no need to edit clips sequentially. Back in the days of tape, you would take your field tape, the tape that you shot, let's say, out on the field or in a production studio, then you would select some segment from that tape, and then transfer it over, record it to another tape. And then you would fast forward or rewind and find some other segment, and transfer that over to the end of the previous clip, one clip after the other. You rarely did things out of order. It was tricky to do that. You just do one thing after the other. You don't have to do that with a non-linear editor like Premiere Pro. Let me just give you a quick example. Here we are in Premiere Pro, and I have five clips here inside the sequence, inside this timeline panel. Let's say I want to take this fourth clip, number four here, I don't want it there anymore. I laid these down one at a time, sequentially. Didn't have to, but I did. And now I want to take scene four here and make it really the second clip, not the fourth clip. So I'm going to just move it over. It's very simple to do that. Slide it on over there. It's going to push scene two and three off to the side. Then there's going to be a place where scene four was now. And you can see it's now one, four, two, three, five. So very easy to do things out of sequence. If I want to take the first clip and put it at the end, quite the same process, just drag it over to the end. Everything else fills in the place. I got four, two, three, five, one. So it's easy to do things out of sequence. In the old days, if I wanted to add a clip in the middle of a sequentially edited tape, it would have been virtually impossible. I would have had to copy the tape over and I would have lost quality along the way when I made that copy. But let's say I just want to take scene number six here, or this clip called Scenic Six. I want it to be the second clip. I can just drag it on over here, put it right about there, and lay it right in. So now it's the second clip, and everything else fell in behind it. With tape, that would just be so tedious and so difficult to do and so time-consuming. Now it just happens in a matter of moments. So that's the non-sequential part of the three elements of a non-linear video editor. The second characteristic of non-linear editing is that it's digital as opposed to analog. In the days of analog tape, you would transfer a clip from one tape to another, and it would lose some quality along the way because it was analog. You really couldn't exactly duplicate the original clip on the next tape. And then if you were to copy that second tape onto another tape, it would lose even more quality. This was called generational loss, and what happened along the way is that you'd get grainier-looking images, and you'd lose some saturation. The color would kind of fade a bit. Well, we're dealing with digital files now. Just a bunch of zeros and ones. And so no matter how many times you use it, it stays the same. You don't lose any quality. That's really important. You can use clips over and over again, and you won't lose quality. The final primary characteristic of nonlinear editors is that they're reference-based. They're non-destructive to the original files. And this is really important to understand this, and some people get really confused about this whole reference-based editing. Let me switch back to Premiere Pro to show you what I mean. Back in Premiere Pro, we have these clips here in what's called the project panel, and we'll talk about these panels in upcoming tutorials, but there are a bunch of clips here numbered 1 through 9. These are not video clips that somehow reside inside Premiere Pro or inside this project. These clips are on your hard drive someplace, and Premiere Pro has not moved them. When you bring them in here into the project panel, you're just creating links to those files back on your hard drive or wherever these clips are stored. You're not moving them around, you're just referring to them. And so if I take this clip here, let's say number seven here, take this clip and drag it over here to the sequence. I've not moved it from the original hard drive location to this spot somehow in this project. All I've done is add a little bit of data to the Premiere Pro project file. They're called PR, PROJ files. And they're just data files. They just have information about where this clip is located on the hard drive and where it's placed inside your sequence. And if you apply any effects to it, it just keeps track of that. If you apply transitions, it keeps track of that. But it doesn't move your clips anywhere from the original location. Let's say I apply an effect to this. I'm going to put some color correction on there, for example. Let me just scroll on down here and put a little color correction on that last clip. Put the old fast color corrector on there, like that. Take a look at it here. I'm going to change the characteristics of this clip. I'm going to go over to the Effect Controls panel. I'm going to maybe warm it up just a little bit. And now that I've done that, I have not changed the original file on the hard drive. I've only put some data associated with this clip inside the project file. If I were to change this, again, it won't change the original file. It just changes the data associated with it in the reference, in the link to that clip. So it's really important to know that when you bring clips into Premiere Pro, and let's say you apply effects to them, or you trim them like this, 
you're not touching the original clip. It's a reference-based process. So Premiere Pro is a non-linear editor, and the most important features about non-linear editing that there's no need to edit clips sequentially, it's digital, you won't have any generational loss, and it's reference-based. You will not change the original files as you edit them inside Premiere Pro.